Hello and welcome to the second in a series of screencasts about the Unidata Integrated Data Viewer. The Unidata IDV team will guide you through this instructional video to assist you in better understanding the IDV. In this screencast, we will follow up on the first screencast by learning how to subset gridded model data. I will assume you have loaded some NAND data as in screencast 1 and you are now at the field selector tab. If you are unsure about how to achieve this, please go back and review screencast 1. Note the data sources panel on the left. The data sources panel is simply the data choices you have made up to this point. In this case, we have loaded some NAM data. The important point to realize here is the actual data have not yet been loaded. We will be subsetting your data such that when we request data from the server, we will be pulling only what you want. This will help the IDV perform better by not needlessly getting data you are not interested in. There are two places in the IDV where you can subset your data before you retrieve them. One via the, the data sources, and the other is in the displays panel of the field selector. In this screencast, we will be examining how to subset via the properties menu. In the next screencast, we will examine how to subset via the display panel. Now try clicking on the NAM data sources and go to properties. This action reveals a number of tabs, including the times and spatial subset tabs. Let's first take a look at the Times tab. This is where you can subset your data in the time dimension. Click on the drop down menu and select Use Selected instead of Use Default. You now have the freedom of right clicking on the Times to reveal another drop down menu. This menu shows many options for subsetting your data in the time dimension. The first option is Show Timeline. Let's go ahead and select that. Note the beginning and end times in the upper corners. And note the date and times below the timeline. You can use your mouse to select the endpoints of your timeline by dragging the endpoints. You can also shift the selection by grabbing the timeline window in the middle and moving it. You can zoom in and out of the timeline with the mouse scroll wheel or the arrow keys. Note the time sets you have selected are colored in red and those unselected are in blue. There are many more advanced timeline options by right clicking on the timeline which we will not cover here. Timelines show up a lot in the IDV, so it is good to get familiar with them. Let's cancel out of Show Timeline. The second option is Select Range, where you can select the first n number of time steps. The third option is Choose Interval, where you can select the Start Index and a Skip Factor. The remaining options are somewhat self-explanatory and we will not cover them here. Note that you can also select individual times with the left mouse button. And you can select non-contiguous times with the Option or Alt key and left mouse button. Finally, you can select a range with the Shift left mouse button. For this exercise, select a range of time steps. Once you have made your time subset selection, click Apply. Now let's examine the Spatial Subset tab. This area is where you subset your gridded data volume in the X, Y, and Z dimensions. Observe the information about the number of grid points at the top of the panel. First note the X, Y, and Level Stride drop-down menus. If you can imagine a three-dimensional grid, these options let you skip grid rows and columns in order to pare down the amount of data you are selecting. This subselection comes at a price of resolution, of course, but it can be quite handy when improving the performance of pulling large amounts of data over a network. Also remember this is a 3D volume, so if you have the amount of data you are requesting in each of the 
x, y, and z dimensions, you are now requesting 1 8 the original volume. Note the chain link that keeps the x and y stride in sync as you subselect. Click on the chain link if you wish for the x and y strides to vary independently. Try playing with a few of these options. You can also subset your data geographically by dragging with your mouse over the map and creating a rectangular subset region. Grab the small black squares to change the shape of the rectangle. Grab the blue perimeter line to move the rectangle itself. Note the geographic bounds of your rectangle are updating on the left. Once you have made a selection you are pleased with, click OK. Now let's get ready to create a display based on our subset choices. We will now select a field we wish to display. Let's say relative humidity at isobaric surface. We will then select a level, let's say 1000 hectopascals. Importantly, note that our sub-selections in time and space we made earlier are available in the Times, Region, and Stride tabs of the Display panel in the Field Selector. Now click Create Display. Here is our relative humidity display based on our subselection choices in time and space. We have now covered the subsetting options that are available in the data sources properties. In the next screencast, we will learn how to subset your data in the displays panel of the field selector. For more information about the IDV or Unidata, please visit us at www unidata.ucar.edu. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions about future screencast topics, please contact us at support-idv at unidata.ucar.edu.